Hi, I'm here with Gary Reuter, and I'm here to ask him some questions. So, Gary, how do you get honey from the honeycomb? So, uh, we call that extracting. Mm -hmm. So, when the bees put the honey into the cells, they cover it with a little capping of wax, mm -hmm. and we need to cut that off first in order to get the honey to come out. So, we cut that off with a hot knife, mm -hmm. and then it goes into a machine called an extractor which spins it around, and then centrifugal force makes the honey fly out of the comb and into the container. So, Gary, how do you not get stung by any bees when you're doing the bee beard with 10,000 bees? We don't always not get stung. <laughs> but um, basically, um, honeybees are not aggressive. And what we're using to do that is their instinct when they swarm to gather around the queen. So we're gonna put a queen underneath the chin of the person, and then all the bees will be attracted to that queen. And they're really thinking of the queen and not thinking of us. How much honey do the hives usually make? Uh, it depends on the location and um, the weather, but kind of the average in Minnesota uh, would probably be about 70 pounds per colony. A five gallon bucket of honey is 60 pounds. What does the bee beard feel like? Um, it, it's kind of weird actually, um, because the first bees that, that come up to the queen, the queen's in a cage and they hang on to the queen, but then other ones come and they, they kind of grip onto your skin with your, their feet. It doesn't hurt, but it, it it just feels kind of weird because you have all these bees grabbing on with, with their feet. And then you can um, usually smell. The bees give off a uh, pheromone. So the first couple bees that get on the queen, they want to tell the other bees to come. And they give off this pheromone that smells kind of lemony. And so you can smell that. How many bees are usually in a hive? Um, Again, it depends on the time of year, but they usually start out in the spring uh, with uh, about between 10 and 20,000 bees. And then that population builds throughout the summer to a peak uh, here in the Twin City area, probably uh, 80,000 bees, 60 to 80,000 bees. And then as summer progresses, it starts to go back down again they probably go into winter with about 40,000 bees. Is there a difference between like a hive, like a wasp nest or um, a honeybee or a bumblebee nest? Uh, yeah. So there, you threw three things in there on me. <laughs> so, so honeybees uh, live in their nest, uh, what we call perennially, which means um, they go through winter in the nest and the next spring they're still in the same next nest and the summer they're in the same nest. Um, bumblebees make a new nest every spring and uh, they build that nest up and they live in that nest. And then in the fall, the way they winter, they don't winter in the nest, they winter by sending uh, new queens, they make new queens and those queens go out in winter um, they might go into some compost pile or under some leaves or something. And then the next spring, uh, they come out and they start a new nest. Uh, wasp and hornets and all of those also do not reuse their nest. And so they winter pretty much the same way bumblebees do. And then they start a new nest. And their nest is made from uh, paper. So they go collect woodside fiber. So Gary, what will you be doing in the booth today? So I'm, I'm the bee wrangler. So I have uh, collected the bees from a bee colony and they're in a, a box there waiting. And I will be putting the queen on the, the person who's gonna do the bee beer and dumping the bees on them. Uh, and the most important thing, which is trying to get them off. So you're not doing the beer today? Uh, no, I'm not crazy. <laughs> No, I have done it in the past, um, but uh, I, have, I have some other big groups. 
So Gary, what technique do you use to get the bees off the other people? Um, well that's a secret. How we, how we get them off? But no, it's um, we shake most of them off first, and you'll see they kind of bend over and and shake them. We're actually doing two bee beards, so we'll go from one person to the next person, and then we move the queen to the other person, and the bees will follow her to okay. there. And then uh, there's going to be a few left, and we brush them off with the bee brush. Hi, we have Josh here. He's going to be doing the bee beard. So, Josh, what do you think? What what um what do you think you're gonna? Uh, what do the bees feel like on your face when you're uh, gonna do the bee beard? Usually, the bees tickle your face. Usually, they're they're very ticklish. They're very friendly, um, but it doesn't feel much. It doesn't. They're not hurting you. Um, they're just uh, really focused on the queen bee. That's what they're doing. So they're just crawling up, and you can feel their furry furry abdomen, furry, uh, furry thorax, uh, they have furry bodies, and that's what you're feeling. That's it. Do you think you're probably going to get stung when you're going to do the bee beard? I, so far, every time I've done the bee beard, I've never been stung. These bees that we're having here are younger bees. So younger bees tend not to sting. They're unlikely to sting. They can sting, and there's still some risk to it. But because of their age and how young they are, they're less likely. Okay. So bees definitely have a way of, uh, uh, in a way, they kind of graduate jobs. So towards the end of their lifespan, they're usually foragers, so foragers are a little older bees. They tend to sting a little bit more. Okay. All right, Josh is going to go put the bee beard on. Let's go see how it's done. <laughs> 